Seeing Like a Shrimp and Smelling Like a Snake by Andrea Marks and Brian Flagg Read by Miss Tuxhorn Seeing Like a Shrimp and Smelling Like a Snake An Amplify Science Book from the 4th grade unit Light and Vision Contents How does a mantis shrimp look in two directions at once? What do star-nosed moles use their strange-looking noses for? How is a catfish like a huge tongue? Why do such small foxes have such big ears? How can snakes smell with their tongues? Glossary. How does a mantis shrimp look in two directions at once? Move your eyes from side to side. What do you notice? Do your eyes move together and in the same direction? Now try moving one eye up and one eye down. It's hard to do, right? For a mantis shrimp, this is no problem. A mantis shrimp has two eyes, but each eye is made up of hundreds of tiny eyes. A mantis shrimp's eyes are raised up on stalks above its head. These structures let the mantis shrimp move its left eye and its right eye separately in different directions. It can look both up and down or both left and right. Structures mantis shrimp use to sense their environment. Light goes into hundreds of tiny eyes, each with its own light receptors. So similar to what we saw in our handbook of eyes, the yellow indicates the light receptors and the red indicates the information going to the brain. Seeing in two directions at once is cool, but how does it help mantis shrimp survive? Like many animals, mantis shrimp will rely on their sense of vision to help them hunt. Being able to look in different directions gives a mantis shrimp more chances to spot prey. A mantis shrimp can look at a fish with its left eye and a clam with its right. How does this work? Light reflects off the fish and gets to the shrimp's left eye, hitting light receptors at the back of the eye. The light receptors respond to the light and send information to the shrimp's brain. At the same time, the shrimp's right eye is sending the brain information based on light reflecting off the clam on the other side. The shrimp's brain processes information coming from both eyes. It recognizes the two kinds of prey and decides which will be easier to catch. Then the shrimp strikes. It uses its powerful claws to kill the fish instantly. Mantis shrimp are colorful animals that live in colorful environments, in and around coral reefs. These animals have lots of different kinds of light receptors in their eyes, many more kinds than humans have. Nobody is sure exactly what the function of so many different light receptors might be. They might help a mantis shrimp survive its environment. Maybe they help it identify its prey. How? That's a question scientists are still trying to figure out. This mantis shrimp is eating a fish it caught. Mantis shrimp use vision to help them hunt prey. St scientists still have questions to answer about how mantis shrimp vision works. Human vision. Most humans see hundreds of different colors. To see colors well, they need plenty of light. Humans are diurnal animals, which means that they are mostly active during the daytime, when there's plenty of light to see all those colors. Humans can't see well in low light the way nocturnal animals can. To see better at night, people have developed special night vision goggles that are sensitive to low light. We have also developed bright electric lamps that provide us with extra light at night. What do star-nosed moles use their strange-looking noses for? Star-nosed moles are named for a unique body structure, a star-shaped nose. 
Why do their noses have such a strange shape? It doesn't help the animal's sense of smell. The star-nosed mole does smell with its nose, but the tentacles that surround the nose have another function, sensing touch. A star-nosed mole has a lot of sensitive tentacles on its nose. Structures star-nosed moles use to sense their environment. These are called tentacles, kind of like an octopus. Those are also called tentacles. Thousands of touch receptors send information to the brain, so these tentacles are covered in little touch receptors. Star-nose moles have thousands of touch receptors on their nose tentacles. That means star-nose moles are very sensitive to touch, much more sensitive than a person. Even a human fingertip, which is one of the most sensitive parts of the body, has only about 3,000 touch receptors. The star-nose mole has about 5,000 touch receptors in its nose, which is about the same size as a fingertip. Why is the sense of touch so important to a star-nosed mole? Feeling around is the best way for these moles to get information about their underground environment. Star-nosed moles spend all their time in tunnels they dig in the dirt, hunting for worms, insects, and other small animals. A star-nosed mole can't find its prey using vision because there is no light in its environment. Even nocturnal animals with high Sensitivity light receptors need some light in order to see. In the complete darkness underground, eyes are useless. The star-nosed mole has to rely on other senses. A star-nosed mole uses its tentacles on its nose to find prey. The tentacles move around as the mole searches for food. Receptors in the tentacles take in information about everything they touch. Star-nosed moles hunt for worms and other prey underground. Star-nosed moles find prey using their sense of touch. The mole can feel tiny differences between objects in the dark. When a mole touches a small object with its tentacles, the touch receptors send information to the mole's brain, which processes the information. The mole then decides whether the object is something tasty like a worm. The touch receptors in its nose tentacles help a star-nosed mole survive in its underground environment. The human sense of touch. The human body has touch receptors all over. The tongue, lips, and fingertips are the most sensitive parts of the body, with more touch receptors than any other part. Humans have different kinds of touch receptors that provide different kinds of information. For example, there are special touch receptors that respond to texture, heat, cold, pain, and even itching. How is a catfish like a huge tongue? Like humans, catfish have taste receptors in their tongues. However, catfish also ta have taste receptors all over their bodies. That means a catfish tastes anything it, it touches with its body. Catfish can even taste things at a distance before touching them. Some people call catfish swimming tongues. This girl can't taste the bottom of the river with her skin, but the catfish swimming next to her can. Structures catfish use to sense their environment. Thousands of taste receptors in the skin all over their body. Wow. Taste receptors take in information from flavors in the water and anything they touch. Information from the taste receptors goes to the brain. Imagine tasting the flavor of anything you touched, sat on, or brushed past. A book, the grass, the seat of the school bus. It might not sound so great to you, but tasting everything has an important function for a catfish. Getting information about its environment. 
Man, I am glad that we cannot taste the school bus when we sit on it. That would be very gross. Most catfish live in muddy water where it is hard to see. They swim along the bottom searching for food. Many kinds of catfish are not picky about what they eat. They will eat plants or animals, living or dead. For a catfish, almost anything it touches might be food. The best way for a catfish to find out whether something is food is by tasting it. Lots of things could be food for a catfish. A catfish will eat tadpoles, insects, plants, dead animals, and almost anything else it can find. With taste receptors in its skin all over its body, a catfish doesn't have to bite something to taste it. As a catfish swims along the bottom of the river, it, its taste receptors take in flavors and send information to its brain. The brain processes the information and compares the flavors to things the catfish has eaten before. If a catfish tastes food with its skin, it opens its mouth and takes a bite. The human sense of taste. The human tongue is covered with tiny little bumps that contain hundreds of taste buds. Each taste bud has 50 to 100 taste receptors. Most humans can't, can taste five different flavors, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and, and umami. Umami means delicious in Japanese. It's often described as a meaty flavor and it's found in foods like cheese and soy sauce. I'm learning something new every day. Why do such small foxes have such big ears? Fennec foxes are tiny desert animals with fluffy fur. The fennec fox has two very large body structures. It's huge ears. These big ears have two important functions. They help the fox stay cool in the hot desert environment, and they help it here. Structures Phoenix foxes use to sense their environment. Outside part of the ear helps bring in sounds from the environment. Sound receptors send information to the brain. The ears of Phoenix foxes are big, but otherwise they work the same way human ears do. Lots of complicated ear structures work together for an important function, getting information from sounds in the environment. Large ears help the finnick fox take in sound better. Like dogs, foxes can move their ears around to point them towards the source of the sound. When sounds come into the ear, sound receptors respond to sounds and send information to the brain. Finnick foxes are nocturnal hunters that use their sense of hearing to catch mice, insects, and other small animals in the dark. The fox's large ears help them hear prey moving around underground. To find prey, a finnick fox points its ears towards the ground and moves its head from side to side, listening very carefully. The fox's brain processes sound information and uses it to figure out exactly where its prey is hiding. Then, the fox quickly digs into the sand to grab the prey. Sensitive hearing helps the finnick fox find prey and survive in its desert environment. Finnick foxes use their sense of hearing to hunt mice and other prey that live underground. A finnick fox listens for prey in the desert. The human sense of hearing. The human ear contains the smallest bones in the body. These tiny bones vibrate when sound comes in. The sense of hearing usually changes as people get older. Kids can usually hear higher sounds than adults can. Still, some animals can hear sounds much higher or lower than a human can. How can snakes smell with their tongues? If you've ever observed a snake up close, you've noticed it flick its tongue in and out of its mouth. It seems to be tasting the air. Actually, 
The snake is smelling the air. A snake can pick up scents with its tongue. Structures snakes use in their environment. Tongue picks up scent particles in air. And here's the tongue again. The tongue carries particles to the scent receptors. These are the scent receptors. The scent receptors respond to the smell and then the information goes to the snake's brain. Scents are made up of tiny and physical particles that float through the air. A snake uses its tongue to catch lots of those tiny particles. The snake's tongue carries particles from the air into an area above its mouth. There, scent receptors respond to the particles and send information about the smells to the snake's brain. Why is a snake's tongue forked, split in two at the end, like this? A forked tongue helps a snake tell exactly where a smell is coming from. Just like having two eyes helps animals tell the distance and direction of things they see, having a two-ended tongue helps snakes tell the distance and direction of things they smell. This helps snakes hunt. Using only smell, a snake can figure out exactly where its prey is. An excellent sense of smell helps snakes survive in many different environments. A snake's excellent sense of smell helps it catch tree frogs and other prey. Snakes use their tongues to smell. The human sense of smell. When a human smells something, it means that tiny scent particles have landed on the scent receptors inside the person's nose. Humans have many different kinds of scents, scent receptors that respond to different kinds of smells. Scientists are still figuring out how many smells humans can detect, but it might be as many as a trillion. There is even a scent receptor in the human nose that is responsible for whether or not a person thinks cilantro has a soapy smell. Glossary Environment All the living and non-living things in an area. Function What something can do. Nocturnal Active at night. Observe. To use any of the five senses to gather information about something. Particle. A tiny piece of material that is too small to see. Prey. An animal that is hunted and eaten by other animals. Process. To change information from one form to another. Receptor. A structure that responds to information coming in from the environment. Reflect, to cause light to bounce off a material. Respond, to change because of some information or event. Sense, noun, this is the thing. How an animal gets information about in its environment. Verb, the action, to get information from the environment. Sensitive, responding to small amounts of information. Sensitivity, how strongly something responds to information. Source, the place where something comes from. Structure, a part that is good for a specific function. Survive, to stay alive. And vision, the ability to see.